Assalamu alaikum and thank you everyone for joining me on this build a new and better habit this Ramadan. Okay, Ramadan, I just realized. Now let me tell you how this all happened. A few days back, I just realized. Now let me first understand what my audience is like. Does my audience understand English only? Or does my audience understand Urdu and English? You can type in the chat box E for English. And if it's Urdu and English, just U and E. I would love to know that if I can carry on in uh, both the languages or I can do it in one language. Okay, let me have a look. Uh, English only. All right, Leila, thank you so much. Okay, both. All right, that's fantastic. Uh, okay, everyone. So I'm going to carry on with English uh, since everyone understands that. Habit. I was in, this is something in Rajab. I was just feeling one day that I want to make this Ramadan really special. We always think, we always want to. But last Ramadan, I was like, you know, I was, we were in lockdown, things were very different, unpredictable. And same like this Ramadan, and things are coming up. And I was like, no, I want to make this Ramadan really special. And how can I do that? And there was a little insight. It was a feeling like, wait a minute, Ramadan is all about making better habits. That's what Allah wants us to do is make better habits. If I can build better habits, I can make better habits for my children. If I can evolve and empower myself, I can evolve and empower my children. This is, there's no rocket science in it, isn't it? So I was working on it and I was like impressed that yes, let's do it. The best thing to do is in a collective manner. When everybody comes together and everybody unites and does the same thing again and again, we all, we all work together on it and it gets better. Now I'm gonna go to my uh, people and I would like to know from them that you know that we're gonna work on habit. According to you, hmm, what is a habit? So before I start that, let me introduce you to myself. I am Wafa Khan, I'm a life skills coach. I've done, I've been working in an education field for about 20 years. And I call them 20 successful years because I absolutely love my job. I have learned to work and understand how it works for children. And now I work with adults a lot. Teenagers have been challenging, but you know what? It's all about if you can handle a toddler, you can handle a teenager. I'm a certified English language teacher, which is like from University of Cambridge. I'm definitely a mother of four boys. And the interesting part is I've got two in their childhood and two are their teenagers. So you know what I mean when I say I'm learning how to handle teenagers. I've been able to bring awareness and the transformation that my clients have been willing to. I've been connected to this field for quite some time. And the more I explore, I love it. Now, I've been trained and I have some mentors in my life and it, that's how it works. So these are some of the people I've worked with, uh, tra got trained under. So Dr. Moise Hussain, you know him, Kamran Sultan, Dr. Geller, Halana Hala Balini, Andrin, I don't know how to pronounce his name at the end, I always get confused, and Emily Seaman. So we've, we've still stay connected and I've learned a lot from them. They have created transformation in my life and helped me do the same for other people. Now that's gonna be the content of today's thing. I want you to stick to the end because at the end of this webinar, you will get to know something really exciting. If you're a mother, teacher, if you are uh, uh, anything, uh, uncle, auntie, whoever you are, if you're connected with children, there's some exciting yeah. news. And even if it's not children, how about you yourself? 
you can help yourself and then you can help them as well so let's have an interactive session i want to know what is a habit so if anybody would like to unmute themselves and tell me what is a habit habit is adat in urdu what is a habit habit is an action that you do on a consistent basis without putting your thought into it because it has become a habit so while you are doing it you're not consciously doing it but you somehow get wired to do it mm -hmm. interesting very nice i like how you added it that you're consciously not doing it but you get wired into it thank you so much would anybody else like to share what is a habit anything even if it's in urdu come up and speak up if you like all right so uh let's continue okay now thank you so much uh for sharing spahat i'm gonna carry on and explain what a habit is anything just like how she explained really nicely anything you do repeatedly again and again and again but consistently on a subconscious on a subconscious level is a habit so you mute yourself please yes, it's a repeated action okay so let me mute yourself. okay that's great so any action that you're doing it on a subconscious level is a habit and you're doing it again and again and again um alexander is has wonderfully described this that you know people don't decide their habit or their future they actually decide their habits which make a future so you don't decide the future just by saying oh i want to be this and that's it you decide your habits and your habits decide your future i love that he explained this so beautifully that it's all what you're doing today will be what you're doing in next 5 years you are successful and if you're not successful it is all because of your habits it's all because of your habits so whenever you want to see what's not working in any way in your life it is all because of your habits okay so let's focus on habits today and let's go further all right now when we talk about habits there's a golden rule that comes in habits there your brain does not recognize that if it's a good habit or a bad habit hamara dimag ye cheez ko nahi samajhta if we are having whatever we are doing is good for us or is it bad habit it doesn't it, it doesn't understand it's our awareness that helps us know that whatever we are doing is good or bad and the golden rule is that you cannot actually just say you know what i'm not going to i'm going to remove this habit and that's it habits need to be replaced you cannot remove them they need to be replaced if you're doing something now and you're worried about it you would need to replace it with something better if you're worried that i am i have a habit of probably nail biting you would need to replace that and we're going to work on the signs of habits later i'm going to explain how but at the same time habits or anything comes with belief if you believe that the change is going to happen let me tell you change is going to happen if you know that this is going to be possible for me then i will tell you it is going to be possible for you if you don't believe that change is ever going to happen you know those terms you know the sentences we say to ourselves i don't think i can do this what say nahi hota 
all these sentences is actually going to always push you down. They're never going to be so helpful. So you've got to believe. I know it's going to be hard, but then know that whatever I'm doing, the change is going to come. But yes, there's also one more thing. It's not going to come quickly. It might not be visible as we want it to be, but it is possible. When you work your muscles, the first day of gym, you don't see those dumbbells on your shoulders. It takes time to build your muscles. It takes effort and so much hard work to see that. You know what, at the age we are or I am, it's so hard to lose weight and to see the effort despite the fact you're working on it. But the part that I believe I can transform myself and I can be back into the shape and have healthy habits is what brings the change. So if you don't believe, your habits are not gonna change. But if you believe, your habits are going to change. Okay, so let's move on. Now we know that our brain cannot distinguish the good habit and the bad habit. This can, you can refer to books, The Power of Habits. You can refer to the books, The Good Habit and The Bad Habit. You can also refer to books like um, The Toxic Habit. There are so many books that will help you know what ha how habits are made and transformed. Right. Now, why do you think we are working in Ramadan? I'm gonna have this interactive session again. And I like the ladies, or if there's a gentleman over here, to participate. Why in Ramadan? Who wants to go first? I believe there are lesser distractions. Um, as you know, we don't have to prepare lunch. And we kind of get a routine that, you know, everybody gets done with their meals at particular times. You, you know your timings well. It's not like your one child is getting hungry. So I believe there are lesser distractions and you're more, more concentrated. Um, plus, because you span it over a month, uh, so it just helps you develop or get into a routine better or to figure out what will work out for you. So I think that Ramadan is a wonderful time for uh, developing any kind of habit, even if it is related to your uh, you know, skincare, your facial routine, or uh, of course, religious, definitely for sure. sure. But I think it's uh, wonderful to get into that mode of routine, of developing a routine and uh, developing a habit. So I think this time is wonderful for that. I absolutely like your answer. You are right. It's a good time as well. Thank you so much for explaining it in detail, Shabana. It is wonderful. Let's listen to somebody else and we can carry on. Anybody else would like to say, why Ramadan? Why? Why Ramadan is a, is a wonderful time to build a new and a healthier habit. If you like. I guess it's, um, uh, Ramadan is like a spiritual retreat. Mm -hmm. um, it takes like, apparently the science says like 30 days or something to build a habit. So Ramadan is there to sort of prepare us for the year ahead um, as a time, you know, to stop eating and, you know, drinking and chit-chatting and wasting our time. It's a time to, for us to reflect and realize, you know, our shortcomings and inshallah prepare for the year ahead. So it's a good time to build habits. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Leila, for adding such a great value. Shabana and Leila, wonderful. Anybody else would like to share? excitement extra feel करते हैं या कुछ जिस चीज के लिए हमें बहुत ज्यादा craving होनी शुरू हो जाती है एक रमजान वो वाहित a month hai jisme hame allah taala 
हमारे अंदर वो चीज पैदा कर देता है ऐसे हार्मोन्स पैदा हो जाते हैं जिससे हम किसी चीज को नो कह सकते हैं या फिर हमारे सामने दस भी चीजें पड़ी हों लेकिन क्योंकि हम लोग फैसला कर चुके हैं कि नहीं हमने इस चीज को हाथ नहीं लगाना तो हम नहीं लगाते हैं ये रमजान हमें सिखाता है ये ये जो रोज वेरी सो यू मीन टू से रमजान इंटेंशन पे है हमारी नीयत हो जाती है कि हमने ये चीज नहीं करनी है तो हम उस पर फर्मली रहते हैं एम आर राइट बिल्कुल बिल्कुल ऐसा ही है हमारे अंदर कुत इरादी पैदा हो जाती है a firm belief to take firm actions what i'm understanding from your um an answer is it exactly bilkul bilkul thank you so much for sharing that you ladies are amazing now you are so right you know our body is body flesh and blood and soul when in ramadan it's such a beautiful month because when you don't have to work for so much on food like breakfast lunch dinner i know we spend a lot of time sometimes in the kitchen but if you actually look at the essence of it digestion is a high energy process it takes a lot of energy from our body it consumes it so whatever we are eating you see people they eat and they sweat that's because their the systems working the machines doing its job but when you don't let your body do that so your body is calmer it's relaxed it knows that it doesn't have to work on this thing for some time and then it gives more time for your soul and the other parts to work effectively and what allah does so beautifully is that he just simply opens the gate of paradise and he's open handedly asking us to come to jannah and this is where i found the beauty of it i was just like you know you know like how expo 2020 is a big thing in dubai now and everybody wants to go it's the ticket we have to pay for it what if you know that the gates of expo are open and it's a free day today who's not going to miss it i'm going to go i'm going to go and see it the same way we want to be in jannah and that's our motive that's our aim the interesting part is that any effort that we are doing in this month even if it's the intention or the action has been rewarded multiple times now that if i knew i have to work this month and get paid 700 times i would not miss a day not miss a minute not miss the hour and the good thing is that allah is not expecting you to be on the musalla and do the salah only or to read quran and that's it every single action that improves your body and that improves your soul and that improves your personality and that improves you as a person in whole is given to you in mul- in rewards of by multiplying it so many times and i absolutely think that we forget sometimes how even our sleep and you know feeding our kids or being a good partner to our husband or doing our jobs effectively can just give us some good rewards so yes just like how it is mentioned in the hadith the reward of deed depends upon the intention and every person will be rewarded according to its intention in uh, what intentions they have and the best part is the reward of every deed is multiplied seven times than done in any other month how beautiful is that you know it's just like you know i can go and get something 70 times more so that's what made me that was what the motive behind organizing this webinar so let's do something that is 70 times more or 700 times more for us and our family we do what we are good at 
we really, really work hard. We, we are really good mothers. We're good fathers. We have our intentions right. We serve our families. We do our jobs right. But what else can we do? There's not a cap on it. It's an open door. Let's make it bigger. So now since we know why, and let me ask you all, and I want to know this all, even in a chat box, please tell me, are you willing, are you willing to get what you want this Ramadan? Are Absolutely you? no doubt about that. <laughs> That's it. That's the kind of answer I'm looking for. Well then, Shivana. Anybody else? Are you willing to get what you want? This yes, yes. Drama? Yes, yes, we really oh, want. Nazine. That's what it is. You need to speak to yourself and say it. Thank you, Shavana Nazin. What about anybody else? Yes, Leila, that's the spirit. We want what we're made for. We have the intentions. And so we will. That's the first step. It's always the first step. Okay, thank you, Sabaha. Thank you so much. When you say yes to yourself, you achieve the huge rewards because Allah rewards you by your actions. Mama. Your deeds come after. He rewards you with all the intentions that you have to make it bigger. Okay, let's move forward. Mommy. Now let's understand the signs of habits. You all know, and I just like, I think Shabana, were you the one who said that our efforts and our uh, actions are on the subconscious level? So, yes, Shabana, did you say that? Yes, I mean, I, I did say that, you know, we get wired into it because then yeah. we start doing it unconsciously. Absolutely. So when we do that unconscious, subconsciously, what happens is our brain works with a very minimum amount or percentage wise on a conscious level. The rest of thing is done by our subconscious mind. You know, like breathing, you're breathing. You're not making a conscious effort to breathe, are you? You're doing that. You know, when you wake up in the morning and the first cup of coffee, I think the first time or the tea, that must be the first time you made the effort. But the rest of the time, you automatically do it. You come home and you put your bag on the right side or the left side of the table, wherever. You don't consciously do that. It's on a subconscious level. Sometimes we can look a little bit further. You know how people bite their nails, how people do different things is so much on a subconscious level. That's how the efforts turn into. Now over here, I've put different percentages, but that's just for your understanding. Mostly, 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 it is by 95%, everything that you do or think or feel is on a subconscious level. And when you start making conscious effort, that's where the change happens. Now, how does it happen? I've got it right in front of you. There are only three things that you've got to work on. It's the cue, routine, and the reward. If you look at whatever you're doing, it's around there. It's always in this circle. You definitely crave for something which is turned into a reward that's why you have it. That's why you take the action. Now, if looking at closely at what is a cue, cue is a trigger. I'm just gonna give you a little example. I come home, I'm hungry. That's my trigger. I'm hungry. I feel like, mm, I wanna eat something. I know I wanna eat something good, but you know what? It's triggering me, I'm hungry. What does it tell me? I go into the fridge, I see a packet of crisps, uh, in the cupboard, in the fridge, I see a Coke or a drink or a juice there or whatever you have put. Um, no fruits and vegetables, they, but they are hard to chop, clean and do. I just quickly grab a piece of bread, 
spread some cheese and I am done and this is it. So I know if I go to the kitchen, I open my fridge subconsciously, get whatever is there and the reward is, that's what helps me. I feel full. Now, craving is directly linked to the reward. It's directly linked to the reward. You crave for something, that's where the reward is. And you need to understand what you're craving for and how you're rewarding yourself. Why? Because that's where your hormones are working for. Habits are totally built by, you know, uh, the triggers, the reward is where dopamine comes in. Now, dopamine is a hormone that makes you feel ah oh, happy. It makes you feel good. It makes you feel, um, yeah, this was nice. This is where dopamine comes in. And it feels quite positive. But dopamine doesn't know that if it's doing the right thing. Okay? So you need to watch what your cue is. What's triggering you? When you work on your triggers, like feeling hungry is normal, but how about when you're hungry and you've chopped up some nice vegetables already, or you're hungry and you don't bring in any cheese, you don't bring in any packet of crisps or cake or chocolates at home, you're never gonna go and get into a routine to eat it. Don't bring in something where you physically, mentally, or emotional behavior follows it. You know, like it's quite hard when you've got a nice dessert in front of you and you just can't help but eat it. So sometimes you just don't see it. Out of mind is when it is out of sight. The question is again, can we do it? What do you think, ladies? Can we do it? Can we transform our habits? I think we can. And I hate to be the first one every time, but yes, uh, I think don't, we definitely don't, can. Don't say that hard word. Don't say that hard word because being first, you're an opportunist. That's the best thing about you. Grab it. First come, first serve. Yes, of course, you can do it. That's how we do it. But again, the next question is, and the right question to ask ourselves is, will we do it? That's the question we need to ask ourselves every single time. Will we do it? I want to do it so many times. You know, when we, are don't, we can't get into the habit of doing so many things, it's because we don't will to do it. We always think, I'll do it the next day, I'll do it the next day, and I'll do it the next day, and it keeps moving forward. Let's take a deep dive, everyone. I want you to take a moment. Take a moment. I'm going to stop sharing the screen so we can look at ourselves and think. I want you to take a moment. Mm -hmm. And I want you to think, what is that one habit? Just one habit. I only want you to, to say that one habit that you want to work on this Ramadan. Get the intention there. That's this, this one habit I want to work on in this Ramadan. Or I want to work on and I want my kids to work on with me. What's that one habit? You don't need to say it out loud, but you can say it to yourself. I want to, I want to eat not too much this Ramadan. Maybe just stick to one, just stick to one uh, plate of fruit salad or one bowl of fruit salad, a little bit of, uh, good food and that's it maybe this or maybe this one that i'm going to be a lot more grateful this ramadan or maybe you say it to yourself 
maybe I'm going to be a bit more patient and emotionally strong this Ramadan. Maybe you can say to yourself, I'm going to learn how to say no when I don't feel comfortable about a few things. This Ramadan, you can speak to yourself and say, I'm going to build a habit about writing down things and I'm going to forgive people that I feel that have hurt me. This Ramadan, you can write down things that you have. There are so many things that we can work on. We want to work on, and we truly do. One of the things that we have to know that the whole journey of life is not about going to school, getting a job, serving as a husband or a wife, or doing things uh, for the world. It's also for the development of our nafs. If our nafs, it goes through a bit of a struggle and develops itself, we are getting better and successful. And I think that's what helps us achieve more and stronger rewards from our Lord. So let's take a deep dive, everyone. Take a moment and name one thing that you want to work on. When you've done that, when you've named a thing that you want to work on, when you've got it, I want you to type yes in the chat box. Type yes in the chat box. Mama. Mama. I'm waiting. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Shabana and Jabeen. I don't know who's Kashif, the lady behind Kashif, but thank you so much, Leila. Thank you, Sabahat. Yes, there's, there's always one thing that we want to work on. We're not perfect. We never were perfect. But we have a hope and believe that we will keep getting better each day of our life. Thank you so much. Your yes only proves that you are willing to do it. Now visualize. I want to know what is visualization for you? You can turn on your mics and speak to me about it. When I say visualize, what does that mean to you? How can you say what is visualization when it comes to this? Who would like to share? Shabana, do you wanna go first again? I'm sorry, could you repeat that? Actually, I was distracted by my daughter. <laughs> okay, okay, that's all right. Um, visualize, visualization. Do you know what is of what you want to achieve? Of what you want to achieve? Amazing. Could that be a dream, Shabana? It could be because lately I did experience it that I saw a dream and then, you know, I wanted to achieve it. So because I saw it in my dream, and then, uh, you know, I just started working on it because I saw it in the dream. Mm. Uh, okay. So, and the other things are that, you know, I just visualize myself, the actions that I would be doing, like, for example, the things that I want to do in Ramadan, I already start, you know, imagining my routine, that this, these are the actions I'd be doing. I might, I imagine myself doing those things in those particular rooms or at those particular times. So I think, yes, uh, you know, um, uh, that is one way of doing it. Okay, good, good. That's that's awesome. I think, uh, thank you so much. Anybody else would like to share what is visualization or visualizing it? Do you want to explain that? Do you understand this concept? Anybody would like to say? Okay. Oh, I, I, oh, sorry. Yeah, go on, go on, please. Um, it's kind of what you hope to achieve so you uh -huh. have mind's eye before you go and set out to achieve it so for uh -huh. example if you have an idea that you want to read a certain number of surahs or um jussas whatever goal that you set for Ramadan you mm -hmm. visualize it before you do it 
Wonderful, wonderful. Uh, Ramsha shares over here to maximize the limitations of your imaginations. Well, it is, it definitely is. Thank you. What you want to achieve, visualize it. Well done, Sabahad. It's a very strong concept of NLP I'm gonna share over here. It's visualization. Now, when you're visualizing anything, you're literally using your senses, your feeling your sense of seeing or hearing or smelling it or um, you know the touch and you're visualizing everything in that moment and here today I want you all since you're willing to do it visualize what you're going to achieve this Ramadan now when I say what you're going to achieve this Ramadan I mean do you see yourselves in Jannah. That's what our aim is. Do you see yourself in Jannah? Do you see that the gates are wide open in Ramadan and you are there? But what do you need to do for about it? What are the things that you're going to work on that will get you to the Jannah? That's what the visualization we're going to work about. Whenever you wish it, yeah, go on. Is that um, okay? I'm gonna mute. Okay. So that's what the visualization is all about. You know, like anything that we have around us, even it's the laptop that I have, or the Zoom application that I'm using, or the Facebook, or anything that we have has been visualized and someone's actually dreamed about it and achieved it. Nobody knew that the world would develop so fast during COVID and you could connect with the world around by just like, you know, a message away or a click away. And that's the beauty about it. As somebody visualized it, just not a dream, but they actually took certain actions and worked it, worked on it and achieve it. Just like that, you can visualize about your health. You can visualize about your career. You can visualize about your relationships. You can visualize about your children. You can visualize about your job. You can visualize about where you live. You can visualize about where you're going to go after this. You can visualize anything in life, exactly how you want to achieve it. What's possible is that you can think about it and your intentions make way towards it. I'll share a little possibility that I actually experienced, which turned from a wish, I converted into a visualization, and then I, it was such a dream come true moment. And when you think about it and look back and you think about it, oh gosh, it was just a conscious effort in the beginning. So when you take conscious efforts at first, that's how habits are formed. Now we're gonna move forward and I'm gonna ask you to, all of you, to just close your eyes and see what you want to achieve. Look at the things that you want to achieve. If you want to achieve a better health, I want to see it right there in front of you that you're in a better state of mind and body and your soul is healthy as ever. Feel the light in your soul and feel your body is so healthy and stronger than it is today. Visualize it. You know the deep dive we did about what you're gonna work on? Think about it. I'm gonna work on this thing and I'm free of all that habit that was not good for me and it was holding me down 
from being a better person. Visualize yourself stronger. Visualize yourself as a warrior. Whatever you want to name it, visualize yourself as a leader. Visualize yourself as a queen if you want to. Visualize yourself in a very strong position. Feel it. How does it make you feel when you're there? What does it smell like if you're in that position? When you've achieved what you're willing to achieve. What are people talking about when you've achieved it? Think about it, listen to it. Are people applauding you and saying, she did it? Are people supporting you? Do you hear your family smiling and being happy about it? Do you see your strongest support in life, believing that you did it and is still there? Imagine all that and you can actually achieve it. Now, if you have felt some good positive change here, put a hand on your heart and say to yourself, well done. Well done and call out your name that you can do it and you've done it. It's all about believing. It's all about visualizing that you can achieve it. Nothing so stronger than you. Allah has made you a shakal makhlukat. Neither the tree, the sun, the mountain, the tigers, the lions, or anything you think of bigger and stronger than you are, nothing stronger and bigger than you are. You are the Ashraf al and you can achieve it. That's how strong you are. And those who have felt the strength within them and feel a little bit empowered, you can just type one in the chat box and I'll know how you feel. If this has helped you a little bit, then just type one in the chat box and let me know that you feel empowered. Thank you. Thank you. And I hope you feel more empowered and more stronger than you are and more blessed like Allah has created you because we can develop better habits, replace those habits we want to re replace. Thank you. Well done. I can see responses. Thank you so much for that. Thank you. Well done, everyone. You need to congratulate yourself on doing a good job and helping yourself achieve it. An empowered parent is the only one that can that can raise empowered children. Not an empowered parent will always struggle raising empowered children. So you've got to be, you need to be empowering yourself constantly. There's a habit of personal growth. There's a habit of living a life and growing better and better and better. And that's what you can develop. Once you do that, your children, your partner, your husband, your brothers, your sisters, whoever it is, even your parents feel transformed because you have transformed yourself. I'm going to come to the slides again. And when we visualize, we see lots of different colors. And it is stronger, bolder, and bigger. And whenever you imagine yourself, put yourself in that state and make it happen. It will be a big struggle. You might feel demotivated a little bit, but come back to it. And that's where the support comes. I'm gonna to come to the exciting news now. 
when I did this and I thought I'm going to help them, I thought I cannot let the children stay out of this. I have worked with children for so many years and I cannot leave them out of anything that I do. I always like to see them and believe that they are budding stars. They are the budding empowered people. They're gonna grow and raise another wonderful nation for us or another wonderful uh, you know, generation for us. So I have made, a, a design something for them, which is mainly for children that are between nine and 14. Because children who are nine and 14 are much aware they can even be for the older children, but they're much aware and I'm ready to support them as a coach. And this is going to be a special group for them where they're gonna get my assistance and I'm gonna do that this Ramadan just for the kids online, on Zoom and work with them on a habit. Now, when I say on a habit, it's more important that the parents work alongside with the children. Now, if you've read this book, The Seven Habits of Highly Successful People, you will know that there are the habits he also describes in it are all talking about something to be done repeatedly again and again and again and again until it brings transformation within you. There's a habit of gratitude that he works on. There's a habit of sharpening your soul. There's a habit of working on your new skills and coming out of your comfort zone. There's so many habits that he actually asks us to work on because these are the habits of highly successful people. What I've decided is that these children will get full interactive session with me, 60 minutes during Ramadan. These will be the sessions where they can ask me questions and I will work on questions. I have designed something for them that we're gonna work on and build those habits of successful people. We're gonna talk about deep dive into it so that they know what they are doing and they can reflect on it because analyzing your steps, analyzing your past, analyzing your future is all that will help them work and take steps towards betterment. I designed a workbook for them. It took me a while. I was so pleased to do it. Each day of Ramadan has a workbook. It has the affirmations that to work on, that you work on and you tell yourself that you are stronger. You've got, I've got affirmations that will help them be confident. Be confident, be a leader, be a better Muslim. It will also help them reflect on unforgiveness. It will help them reflect on what is Allah willing us to do this Ramadan? Every single day. It will keep them connected. What are they doing every single day? And this will take them towards betterment. This can be done not only by the children, this can also be done by the adults. I do that. I do these things almost every single day. And if the day I missed, I know how it makes me feel. When we work on certain habits, it rewires our brain. And when it rewires our brain, our brain learns to work on a better level. We subconsciously work and do things that are good, that are good for us, that, that are not harming us. That's what it is. We need to subconsciously do things that are good for us and are good for the people around us. When I designed this book, I was about to publish it. It was worth $30 minimum. But I decided I will only sell this book online for 
It's a workbook that you can work and you can get the sessions for free with me. If you want to achieve it, I would want you to WhatsApp me. Just WhatsApp me. I'm not asking a lot. It's just for the commitment. It's only for the commitment that people can stay committed and work with me towards their own betterment and collective effort. Be here with me for, and work on it as a whole, what we need to do and do it in a, in a positive way. Share the vibe, share the good energy and pass it on. I'm gonna end my session today. And this is, these are my links. You can follow me on YouTube. You can follow me on Instagram or on Facebook. And on YouTube, I've got some videos that will definitely help you more about learning how to teach children, how to be with children, even for yourself. They're definitely gonna help. There are lots of videos to work on. I want you to watch it. But when you watch it, listen to it, what it, I'm actually saying. It transformed me. So I'm sure it can transform you as well. Thank you so much, everyone, for being a part of this. I am open to any questions you have. You can ask me any questions you have. I can answer them. And I will be waiting for your responses on my WhatsApp. Yes, anybody? Yeah, um, 17 year older, they can use it as well. See, books don't have an age limit. You can use it for your older kids as well. So if you want to, well and good. It's a good choice. You can, you can do it. I mean, I would, I would do it. All right, when will the session start? That's a good question. Uh, just, I'll do two sessions in Ramadan. In Ramadan, that'll be during Ramadan. As soon as I have a group, we will work on sessions. It will be on the weekends and it will be during the day so that the children can participate to the maximum. And if you want to sit with the, with, with the kids, please get them, get all of your kids around. Take just one book and work on it. Just take one book, that's it and work on it because it's all about building a better habit. It's not about, uh, you know, like everybody needs a separate book. It's all about building a better habit, just getting into a habit of doing things because Allah rewards you for just, even if it's one act. So when you're rewarded for just one act, imagine how you're gonna be rewarded if you're doing two or three. And I think, you know, just five minutes or 10 minutes a day working on yourself definitely gives us so much um, a, a sawab and it will surely make our lives easier. Um, it will be each session. I'm going to do two sessions in Ramadan because I understand Ramadan is a busy time. So I'll just do two sessions and it'll be 60 minutes, one hour. It'll be for 60 minutes and it'll be an interactive session. Um, children can connect. I will be sharing some habit of things, how they can build. There will be some more uh, work on done on habits. It'll be a, like a workshop kind. And we will have an interactive session as well where they can tell how did they feel when this thing happened, um, you know, when they reflect. Because this book is also about reflection. It's a workbook. It's not a book. It's a workbook. It'll help them reflect back. So um, I will be waiting your feedback. Thank you so much, everyone. I'm gonna end my session as promised. It's gonna be for, for an hour. I understand Maghrib is now. So uh, prayers for everyone. Yeah, why not? We can consider habit buddies, why not? I mean, it, it, is, it, is, it is also like how people, we will work on things on, that's such a good idea. We'll work on things on how it goes forward, but it's also about how kids feel confident and happy about 
Um, sometimes um, being too uncomfortable is not a good idea. It's okay to be uncomfortable, but not too much. So, but, but I, I do like that idea. I might consider it, yes. Okay, thank you so much, everyone. Uh, hope to connect. I'm gonna share my details here. So please uh, do WhatsApp me for anything and we can work on better habits. I'll be doing more webinars, inshallah, I'll let you know about it. Okay, thank you so much, everyone. I would end my session now. Allah Hafiz. You can. Thank you, ma'am. Allah Hafiz. Allah Hafiz. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sahab. Sahab. Uh, okay. Thank you, ma'am. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. I hope it was beneficial for you.